the third key theoretical tool we need to analyze education is called conceptual integration. And personally, I love this tool. For me, it gets to the heart of how the actual act of teaching happens. And I've been a teacher for most of my life, and I, I love doing it. And this particular tool really helped me to understand and analyze the actual processes, which I'd been doing quite intuitively. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you through how conceptual integration works by using a practical example, and we can work through it systematically. But before we do that, just take a look in front of you, and what you can see is a very basic diagram which catches the elements of the tool. You've got an input space, one space which you're working with as a teacher, and then you have another input space. Normally something which you're trying to compare or contrast or bring to the kid's attention or try and make someone aware of the possibilities of how they work together. Teaching's doing this all the time. You're always taking one thing and trying to combine it with another. And in that process, you're building upwards in knowledge or you're building upwards in understanding or you're spreading out knowledge into wider and wider areas. And to do that, you have to make connections. You have to always make sure that the kids are following how the one thing is connected to the other. And this tool, conceptual integration, really gets at why it works. The best way for me to illuminate this tool is to really take you through a practical example. Now, what you can see in front of you is overhead transparency I found when I was doing teaching practice one day. And it was the changes the Industrial Revolution made in Britain from 1750 to 1900. And if you look at the overhead transparency, what you can see is you can see right at the bottom, you've got the factories, the Industrial Revolution factories, and the smokestack or the haze coming out of it is producing these different kind of like smoke thought bubbles. Very clever in which they try and catch the essential difference between what life was like before the Industrial Revolution in Britain and what life was like once the Industrial Revolution started. So we can take a look at the first picture. And there you have a farmer happily plowing away. And right next to him you can see an arrow pointing to a guy who's working on a machine in a factory. And when I started to take a look at it, I started to use this conceptual integration tool quite systematically because I'd read about it from guys called Faulkner and Turner, who have this amazing book on conceptual blending, they call it. Uh, and they give a more psychological, linguistic account of how it works. So what you're going to hear from me now is a more educational account. And what I started to do was I started to break it down. And I just started to look for contrasts between input space one and input space two, and start to see if I could make some mappings. And what I noticed immediately was that you had birds on the one side, kind of flying away in the open air, and then you had like a machine on the other side, a regulating machine. I noticed that the farmer was smiling, and I noticed that the poor worker didn't look happy at all. I kind of noticed on the one side that the farmer had a strange piece of uh, clothing, which looked suspiciously like a breast, uh, but there was no connections I could really make to anything on the other side. So I had to discard that idea. Then you have a situation where I noticed that the farmer was outside and that the worker was inside. There was definitely a situation where the farmer was walking and pushing and getting some actual exercise and work, whereas the factory worker was standing and pulling on something. There was a situation where the farmer seemed to have what initially I thought was casual dress, but I suppose in the end it was pretty specialized equipment related to farming itself, and the worker definitely was in uniform. Farmer is using a plow, uh, the worker is using some kind of a machine with pulleys, and in summary you can see that the one's about farming and the other one's about industry. Now the way that conceptual integration works is when you start to make those links, when you start to see connections between birds and machines, what you have to do is you have to start to ask yourself, well, what am I doing? What is the generic kind of connection which allows me to just see that there's that link? And in the diagram in front of you, what you can see is I've tried to put those out, and that gives us a kind of like a generic space, which catches the reason why we've made the linkages between input space one and input space two. So, for example, birds and machine would give us the beginnings of the environment that the person's working within. You've got a smile, no smile, and that really relates to emotions. You've got outside, inside, 
that is the space the person is working with. You've got walking, pushing on the one side and standing, pulling on the other. Well, that's the actions that are involved. You had comparison of the different uh, working clothes, and that gives us a sense of dress. We had the plow and the machine, that gives us a sense of the equipment. And we've got farming and industry, which is basically the mode of production. Now that really gives us the basics of it, but it doesn't tell us anything really interesting about how a teacher would land up teaching this to make the kids excited and interested and get an understanding of the changes that happened when the Industrial Revolution came along. And really that kind of work happens in what Fauconier and Turner call a blended space. Now in that blended space you start to make sense as a teacher because you actually know what's going on. And, and you start to make sense of it with the kids. So, for example, if you're working with the birds and the machine, well, you could start to make a contrast between the natural world, which the farmer was working within, and the artificial world, which the worker's working within. Certainly, you've got the smile, no smile. And rather than just talking generically about emotion, what the teacher would actually do, she'd talk about the discontent that started to build up as the workers started to confront very different and difficult working conditions. And the contrast between outside and inside, she could start to point to the cramped working conditions that the Industrial Revolution workers were finding as they got pushed into factories which were really overcrowded and pushing out as much production as they could. And what you can see I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say that that uh, fourth space, that blended space, is the space where the actual act of teaching and learning happens. That really just gives us a simple example of how conceptual integration works. And in later videos, working with this third tool, I want to take you into the complexities of how it works in all sorts of different ways, which helps us understand the act of teaching and how to theorize the act of teaching in more detail.